What's going on, growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tucker are going to show you how to grow massive cabbages so that you can be harvesting them fresh from your own backyard. Let's go. This is the end goal right here. Huge, organically grown cabbages that we can come out and eat fresh. When most people think of cabbages, they think of the standard green variety like this, but there are many different kinds and colors. There are even purple cabbages. Those are some of my favorite ones for their excellent flavor and beautiful color. As I move over to these fantastic cabbage plants, me and Tuck want to remind you to grab some exclusive summer merch at jamesprigioni.com. Let's get back to cabbages though. So cabbages thrive in cool weather, and in most areas, you could plant an early crop for the spring, and you can also plant a late crop for the fall. For spring plantings, you can start your seeds indoors, on a south-facing window, in a greenhouse, or in a grow room. You want to start your seeds about six to eight weeks before your last expected frost date. The idea is we want our plants ready to be transplanted into the ground about two to three weeks before our last expected frost date. For a fall crop, you can either directly sow your seeds right into the ground, or you could transplant out some starts in mid to late summer. But if you live in a region that gets really hot, you may want to wait till late summer to actually put your plants into the ground. I like to start my seeds in flats, and I suggest you use a good quality potting mix. One of my favorites is the Happy Frog soil. I make sure the soil is nice and damp, I put that into my seed cells, and then plant my seeds about a quarter inch deep. After that, I water them in and cover it with a plastic lid. Then, I bring it to a location that gets good sunlight with temperatures ideally between about 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. After my cabbage seeds pop up, I like to keep the temperatures around the 60s and I also like to add a bit of a breeze. To do this, I'll set a fan up in the greenhouse. This way, there's some air movement. What this does is when we keep the temperatures low and we keep some air movement, it makes sure the cabbages stay short and strong and they don't get too tall and leggy. Once my seedlings get two true leaves, I transplant my cabbage plants into four inch pots this way the plants can get a little larger and they can become more cold hardy before I transplant them into the ground. Once my cabbage plants have at least three leaves and the temperatures during the day are reaching at least the 50s, we can start to transplant out our cabbages. Before I do this though, I like to make sure that I harden off my cabbage plants. Hardening off is just a process of getting your plants acclimated to those outside conditions before actually transplanting them. So what I do is I bring my cabbages outside for like an hour or so to start, then I bring them back in. And then I'll continue to do that uh, for a number of days until those cabbages can stay outside for at least 24 hours. After that, I know that my cabbages are ready to be transplanted into the ground. When transplanting, I suggest picking a day that's either cloudy or like misty with a bit of rain. This way you don't have some hot sun scorching your plants once you put them out. Another thing I like to do when transplanting is I bury my plants a little deeper than the cell that they came out of. That's helped a lot for me in the past. It seems to do really well and it makes your plants a little stronger so they're not like getting blown around in the wind too much. After my cabbage plants are all transplanted out, what I like to do is to use my hinged hoop house cover with a plastic cover just to protect my plants from any kind of late frosts. After the fear of any late frosts have passed, what I'll do is I'll use this same hinged hoop house cover and put an insect netting over it. This way I can protect myself from some of the cabbage white butterflies, one of the big issues we'll get into later. Another thing I like to do is if we get some really hot days in the early spring. I'll cover my hinged hoop house with a 40% shade cloth. What this does is reduces the amount of stress on those young plants and it makes it so they can grow you know, continually instead of having that huge amount of stress from a really early hot day. When it comes to spacing, if you want big cabbage heads like this one right here, you need to give your plants at least one square foot of space. I like to plant my cabbages and everything else in the square foot gardening method. If you only give your cabbages about six inches of space, they're just not going to get that big. So if you want to grow massive cabbages, you need to give them at least one square foot. When it comes to the soil, cabbage plants are heavy feeders. So what I like to do before planting is mix in a good amount of compost into my beds or the location that I'm going to plant my cabbages in. Then after I have them transplanted about three or so weeks after that, what I'll do is I'll go around and I'll top dress all my plants with some compost or some balanced fertilizer. So when I do it with the balanced fertilizer, I'll take something like a potty mix or some of my homemade soil. Then I'll just mix in a, a balanced fertilizer, something like the Ivy Organics. And then I'll top dress my plants with this. This way I can add that uh, good amount of fertilizer and give them some more nutrition because again, cabbage plants are heavy feeders. As your cabbage plants are growing, to sustain good growth like this, plants this large need a good amount of water. That's one reason that I like planting them in the spring so much because we get more rain here, so it's just easier to actually maintain them. Another thing you could do is come around, is you wanna make sure you have a nice, 
thick mulch down underneath your cabbage plants. What this will do is it will help retain the moisture and it will also help regulate the temperature of the soil. Super important when you wanna grow big, healthy cabbages. When watering your cabbage plants, you wanna water at the base. What you don't wanna do, especially during cool weather periods, is water the leaves. If you water the leaves and get the plants all wet during cool, wet conditions, or if it's high humidity, then you're just gonna leave your plants more prone to actual disease issues. So try to keep the leaves dry if you can and water from the base. As the cabbages continue to grow, go out and monitor the leaves. If you see some of the leaves starting to turn yellow, what you might need to do is add another top dressing of compost, or you could add a top dressing of some fertilizer that's dominant in nitrogen. What this will do is adding that nitrogen dominant fertilizer will encourage the slow growing cabbages to uh, mature quicker and that can help you get that harvest before the summer heat comes or before the frost comes in the fall. The major problem with growing cabbages are from the cabbage worms and the cabbage loopers. Here's some evidence of their damage right here. The thing is, if your plants are attacked when they're young, the cabbage worms can do a devastating amount of damage. Fortunately, we have some solutions for these. The first thing we can do is use an insect netting when the plants are young. We'll cover our plants. This way, the cabbage white butterflies can't get to the cabbages and lay their eggs, which then turn into the worms. Another thing we can do is to use these excellent organic sprays. This is the BT. This is made from naturally occurring soil bacteria, so it's an organic spray. It works incredibly well, and I have to admit that this BT spray has taken my cabbage production from like spotty to the incredible consistent production you're seeing here. So these are two super valuable products. Same thing, both BT, but it works incredibly well for your cabbage plants. The other thing that's so great about it is it won't harm your beneficials, your bees or anything. It's pretty selective on the kinds of uh, pests that it actually goes after. When the cabbage heads are firm, like this one right here, they're ready to be harvested. And like this other one over here, I'll show you. Right here. So when we harvest our cabbage heads, we can just cut them down at the base. And if we want, we could leave some of the stem in place. This way, in the crotches between the stem and the leaves, the cabbage plants shoot out some little mini cabbages, almost like Brussels sprouts. So you can leave them in place and allow that to happen. But what I usually do is just pull them out and plant like peppers or something in their place. I'm not going to harvest this cabbage today or any others because I just have so many still that I need to eat. Just a few days ago, I harvested a bunch of cabbages and I'm still just trying to catch up on eating these ones. So we'll save these for a few more days till we harvest them. I like to plant a bunch of different varieties of cabbages that all mature at different times. This way I can plant all my cabbage plants at once yet still get a staggered kind of harvest because they take different lengths of time. If you're a new grower or it's like one of your first seasons doing it or you have a tough time growing cabbage because your seasons are short, I suggest you grow a variety that's super easy and a quick mature one. Something like the early Jersey Wakefield cabbage. This thing has good disease resistance. It's open pollinated, which is awesome. It only takes about 65 days to mature, so it's a great cabbage for beginners. Or you could try something like the Melissa Savoy cabbage. That only takes about 85 days to mature. It's got good disease resistance as well. But if you're a new gardener, I suggest you avoid something like the Dead On Savoy cabbage. That thing takes like 105 days to mature, so if you have a short season, it's probably not worth trying something like that. Just grow things that do well in your particular location, especially if you're new. Before I let you go, I want to go around and show you some of my favorite varieties of cabbages that I'm growing, and just to give you a peek of what they look like and what you could be growing too. The Early Jersey Wakefield, one of my favorite all-time varieties. You gotta grow this one, especially if you live in New Jersey. The Dead on Savoy, incredible color, not huge cabbages, but just striking and absolutely delicious. The Melissa Savoy cabbage, probably my second favorite green cabbage, only second to the Early Jersey Wakefield, but look at the ribbing, look at the texture, so beautiful. The Brunswick cabbage, nice shape to it, tight heads, and just fantastic looking. The Red Express cabbage, super tight heads, incredible color, and uh, it's just so striking to look at. And when you cut it open, absolutely insane looking. The Glory of Incajan, big size heads, excellent shape, good flavor, just a great cabbage overall. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck were excited to make this video because we want to try to get as many of you growing fresh cabbage as you can. A lot of people have had issues in the past with the cabbage worms and the cabbage loopers, and I think that BT will help a lot of people. I've started using it a couple years ago, and like I said, my cabbage like production went from like spotty here and there to like consistent, great production. Look at the boss too showing up. This guy just never stops. 100% dedicated, always out here. He usually snacks on some of our uh, cauliflower stuff. He's not as big of a cabbage fan. He's more of a cauliflower dog. 
but just you got to spam those hearts down there for this boss i mean he's always out here even if it's super hot so we love spending time with him in the garden and we love that you like spending time with us while we're in the garden we hope that you got some value out of this video. We hope that you feel encouraged to get some cabbage plants in the ground. And we hope that we uh, equipped you with some knowledge so that you can actually get the harvest and then, you know, get the joy of cutting it, feeling that firm cabbage, peeling back the leaves like it's Christmas morning, opening a present, and then bringing it inside and just, you know, getting to enjoy every piece of it. Before I let you go, me and Tuck want to let you know to check out the merch down low at jamesprigioni.com. We've got the exclusive summer merch. We've got water bottles. Uh, we've got the kneeler, which is really cool. Only a limited time thing too. There's not that many left of them. So if you want one, make sure you grab one. We're also gonna be adding kids clothes and stuff. So we're just trying to provide you guys with some value. And if you wanna give back to the channel and help support me and Tuck, uh, we're so thankful for that. We also want to thank one of our new channel members, Richard Murphy. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for contributing. Thanks for making not only this garden possible, but you know, videos like this where we can help other people grow more food. So not only are you helping us to grow more, but you're also helping everyone else to grow more too. So we want to thank you for that. Me and Tuck had a blast. Let's get one more quick shot of this guy. Look at him with the, with the stick on his face. What are you doing, boy? Get the stick on your face, boy. He's been hanging out in his holes, coming in and out, and you can see he's got some uh, spider web on his face. So this guy was definitely you know, going around somewhere, but he always has a blast out here. So do we. James and Tuck, we back again real soon. We out.